On this episode of the Blue Bloods, we are joined by new Towson head coach Pete Shinnick. Coach Shinnick coming from the University of West Florida, where he led West Florida to the D2 National Championship in 2019 and playoff appearances in four of the last five seasons. Coach, I appreciate you taking some time to join me on the show today. Well, thank you. No, I'm really, really fired up to be here and excited about uh, this opportunity. So looking forward to uh, seeing how all this stuff works out. Absolutely. I'm one of my, I, I played with uh, Trent Archie in high school. And uh, did you really? I did. He, he me and him uh, graduated the, from the same class at Baker High School. I, I played. Get out of here. So, and you were in there with uh, Malik too. Yes. Yeah. I, I played offensive line. <laughs> Well, no, Trent is uh, Trent. Trent was a great one, man. I mean, we really, uh, really got a lot of mileage out of Trent Archie. So uh, he he did a fantastic job for us. So uh, that's awesome, man. What a small world, huh? I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. But coach, uh, for, the first question I have is, and this is for every new coach that I have on the show, is what was it about Towson that really stuck out to you in the interview process, what you were looking for in the opportunity to move up to the next level? Yeah, really impressed with just, um, you know, kind of what has taken place from a university standpoint in the last uh, 10 years. You know, when you look at the growth and you look at the new buildings that are being, that have been built and that are still being built and that have been completed uh, just kind of where the university is. And this, this university is on the rise and continues to grow and continues to get better. And so um, that was very appealing uh, from the onset. And then, um, you know, just looking at the program and saying, okay, uh, you know, from a football standpoint, where, where is this program? And, you know, what is, uh, you know, what, what are the opportunities that are there uh, with uh, Towson football and felt like there was just a lot of positives uh, that, you know, could be had here. And as I looked at it, I feel like, you know, got a lot of work to do, which is, which is what we're doing right now. Uh, but with that being said, there've been some past success. Uh, I think the location, uh, the opportunity, there was just so many pluses uh, that it was a very difficult one to pass up. And well, you've won a national championship. So in your mind, what are the first steps in building a championship culture at the at this new stop for you? Because, I mean, this is a team that has played in a recent national championship, has been at the top level. What do you have to do to reestablish the championship culture at Towson? Yeah, it's really day by day. Uh, just getting everybody to uh, be on the same page. Uh, getting everybody to um, buy in and really getting every guy to understand uh, what his role is uh, and how he can help this program uh, become the best that it can be. Um, so that's part of what the next uh, really, well, uh, that's part of what every day is about um, moving forward, getting every guy on the same page, understanding what his role is uh, and then seeing how they can be at their best. Um, I think we got a really good group coming back. We've got a lot of holes because we lost. Obviously, you look at the roster, you look to see who we lost. Um, we lost guys uh, that contributed heavily to last year's team. Uh, so, you know, they're the they're the first guys that need to be replaced. And then um, we got a handful of guys that, um, you know, are back that I think can be a huge part of what we're doing. Um, so, to me, it's getting every guy dialed in on the same page, uh, understanding what their role is and what they need to do to help this team be great. And when you look across the CAA, they were one of the deepest conferences in the FCS this year. I mean, multiple teams ranked William and Mary making the semifinal run, Richmond, the, the list goes on and on. And then you also have the new additions in Campbell and North Carolina A&T. Does that excite you to join a conference that from is one, the biggest FCS conference and two, one of the most competitive in the country? Yeah, that was very appealing. And I think when you look at what we did um, at UWF joining the Gulf South Conference as a football playing team, all, all the other sports were already obviously in the, in the Gulf South Conference. But for us to get in uh, as a football member going in when North Alabama had won national championships and been a perennial champion, West Georgia had been 
uh, one of the top four teams in the country, uh, you know, for the two years prior to us playing. West Alabama had made the playoffs. FIT had made the playoffs. Delta State had won a national championship. You know, so uh, I feel like very similar experience coming into the CAA, a very loaded conference, uh, a conference that uh, has a tremendous amount of respect uh, and week in and week out, you're going to be challenged uh, by whoever you're playing. And you experienced a lot of success with young quarterbacks. Of course, you know, freshman of the year, transfers to Western Kentucky and, and Austin. How important is quarterback development at Townsend? And, you know, for you, what are you looking for in a quarterback when you get on the recruiting trail? Yeah, looking for a guy that uh, really can command the offense, uh, and just, you know, does a great job leading uh, his teammates. And so we were blessed at UWF to have uh, some really good quarterbacks. Two of them obviously decided to uh, leave and go up. Uh, our first quarterback, Mike Beaudry, led us to a national championship as a redshirt freshman uh, and then got hurt his sophomore year and then transferred and became a starter at UConn uh, and Idaho. Uh, so, uh, you know, our second guy who started for us, Austin Reed, came in in 2019 and did the same thing. Richard, freshman year, led us to a national championship. Uh, and then the second year, led us to the first round playoffs and then transferred and went to uh, Western Kentucky and had an amazing, uh, you know, season last year. Uh, and then last year's quarterback came to us out of junior college and really uh, led our team to the final four. So uh, I look for a guy who's a great teammate and, uh, you know, can direct the offense uh, and really just kind of commands uh, that type of, uh, uh, you know, approach uh, daily, just trying to get better and, and puts in a great work ethic. We'll have great competition this spring. I'm, I'm excited to see, uh, you know, who we have and, and, and the way it plays out. But that position obviously is going to be key in our offense uh, developing and moving forward. And, you know, these next few questions are about recruiting. It's it's changed so much in college football. You're from the Maryland area, and you're, you're back in that location, but you also have a lot of ties in the South. How are, how are you and your staff going to balance recruiting that Northeast region while also not ignoring Florida, Georgia, and a, and a really rich recruiting states down South? Yeah, I think recruiting's changed, as you mentioned, and I think uh, with everything that is uh, available to people, um, through the transfer portal. I mean, what's local, what isn't local. Uh, we do want to recruit, you know, a three, three and a half hour radius really, really well. Uh, but there are a lot of people recruiting that area as well, <laughs> you know? So there's a lot of people that are recruiting, uh, the local talent. We want to give an opportunity. If a guy wants to be here and wants to be a part of our program, we're going to do our due diligence and trying to find that guy, uh, and trying to identify that guy, uh, to make sure that he understands, you know, that Towson could be a great fit for him. But, you know, a lot of times those guys, uh, you know, they want to go see what it's like at a Mac school or go uh, another group of five school that they feel like, uh, you know, they could have success at. And so not going to deter us from recruiting them. Uh, again, we're going to try to find the right fit for us. But as you mentioned, we do have ties to other states. Uh, and, you know, we're going to continue to try to bring the best student athlete, the best representation uh, representative of this program, uh, you know, bring that guy to campus and, and have him be a part of our football program. So, uh, you know, we'll spend a lot of time here in this area, but uh, I think there's also opportunity for some other guys as well. And we all know what the transfer portal has become. It's become so large of, of a part of college football. And then you still even have Juco recruiting where you've had a lot of success at the Juco level recruiting guys too. How do you balance high school Juco and the transfer portal recruiting? Is there a percentage of your roster breakdown that you're looking for? Is it just, well, if we have this hole, we're going to find the best guy to fill it. What's your overall recruiting approach with all these different avenues for coaches to utilize now? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I think similar to what the NFL does, you know what I mean? You got to fill some needs through free agency. You got to fill some needs through um, uh, through the draft, you know, and you want to continue to build the best roster that you can uh, by all means available. And, uh, you know, junior college and high school guys are probably the ones that have been left uh, behind a little bit because of the portal. Because really what the portal has done is, you know, a guy plays a little bit or a guy has some success, then a bigger program is going to look to see if they can scoop that guy up. And I think the hardest part for a lot of guys that go into the portal is, 
you know, they think, oh, I'm, I'm a starter at a lower level. Well, they want me to be a starter at the upper level. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily the case. Uh, most of the programs are looking to fill their depth uh, through the portal because they've already got established depth. Now, again, you take an Austin Reed. I think he's a tremendous example um, but uh, because he had great success. But there's also probably – it's probably 10 to 1, if not 15 to 1, uh, of guys that didn't have the success that an Austin Reed had that went there and were big-time players at lower levels and then did not have the have that success uh, granted to them. So as as we look at it, it's it's a threefold deal, really trying to find the best available person. And you want to build the core of your team with high school guys, um, and you want to be able to, to have that. But then you need to also fill in with guys that you feel could be great additions to your program that – add the quality, depth, and experience that you're looking for through the transfer portal and through junior college. I, I, I completely agree with you on the, you know, a lot of guys I think get swept up in the recruitment because you've seen too many guys who might be all conference, all Americans at the FCS or D2 level go to P5 or, or even a group of five, and then they wind up number two on the depth chart. And that goes their opportunity at the next level. But coach, you've been through the first few weeks here at Towson already. What's next for you? What's the summer look like? What's the spring looking like? What's the next things on the checklist for you as you prepare to go into the 2023 season? Well, yeah, before we jump too far, I mean, we, we need to finish up, you know, recruiting. Uh, we've got to be able to get some guys in here at semester and then uh, get a, get a few high school guys signed. Uh, and committed to us uh, here in the next couple weeks. So that's really where the due diligence uh, is working. That's really where the, uh, the time is being spent. Um, you know, we'll have a spring game April 22nd right now. That's kind of the, uh, uh, the, the date that we put down to hopefully shoot for that. Uh, we'll have an opportunity to uh, get our team back on campus starting um, here uh, at the end of uh, January. So start working with them, getting them in the weight room, uh, getting them to understand the new um, the new offenses, new defenses that are going in so that they can have time to master that. Uh, and then, you know, we'll go in the summer. Got a couple of, I think we're trying to plan four summer camps right now, trying to be able to uh, maximize our time there. And then <clears throat> we're going to recruit pretty much every day until the start of the season probably making sure we have the right guys uh, in place to be able to get done what we want to get done. And and the, and the final two questions, Coach, you return home to Maryland. How much does that mean to you, and what is it like to finally be coaching back where you're from, what, where, you, where you grew up, and everything like that? Yeah, that's been really probably one of the funner parts of this process when I've had a little time to uh, just in, uh, you know, sit back and kind of reflect a little bit. So to be in the place where you were born and to play in Johnny United Stadium uh, and to have the opportunity to, uh, you know, run into a lot of people who uh, watch my dad play or their parents were fans of my dad uh, just kind of, you know, makes it all. Uh, you know, come together a little bit. So that, that's been a really, really fun experience uh, and, you know, uh, an, an exciting aspect of, uh, of the first month here uh, at Towson. And the final question, Coach, what is your message to all the Towson fans and supporters out there? And what are your expectations year one? Have you set those yet? Or are, are you just going in here and, look, and looking to make it the, the biggest impact you can year one? Yeah, really, I think message to the fans is, uh, you know, come on out. We, we need your support. We, we, we need you around our program, and uh, we need you to come out and uh, cheer for us on Saturdays and make the most of uh, this time for our student-athletes. I, I, I want to make Johnny United Stadium uh, one of the best environments uh, around, and so we need your support. We need you coming out. We need you, uh, you know, uh, supporting our program. And then, you know, my expectations, uh, you know, next year are really – Uh, Our guys just playing the best football they can. And so we'll get a group together. We'll see what we have, uh, you know, uh, going through spring ball, see what kind of pieces we need to add to it. But, uh, you know, uh, I've been, I've been very fortunate to have some, have some great success in the seasons that I've coached and, you know, never have we said, Hey, we got to win the conference championship or we got to go to the playoffs or it's always been, we want to play great football. And so that's kind of our measuring stick. We, we, we talk about it in it's how we play, not who we play. And we want to play great football. And so uh, if we're playing our best and we're doing what we're supposed to, uh, 
then good things are going to take place. Coach, I appreciate you giving me a little bit of your time. Again, like I told you before we started recording, congratulations on being named the head coach at, at, at Townsend. And I'm looking forward to following uh, your career, and I, I think there's big things on the way for Townsend un, under your control. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, tell Trent I said hello. Uh, he was a great one. So that's, a, that's quite a small world, man. Uh, that's, a, that, that's a unique deal right there.